populating and in five, four, three, two. Wow, this is really slow. There we go. All right, so we are going live. The meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Isn't that cute? Okay. Uh, all right. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, good evening. As everyone's logging in and tapping in on Facebook, we say good evening to all of them as well. We are preparing to get into our midweek Bible study. Um, I'm glad to see some faces. I'm glad to see some people joining on Facebook. Facebook, we're going to ask you to, um, you can interact and leave your comments and your questions throughout the lesson. And uh, we will get to them as the lesson goes on. Um, make sure you get all the questions to the instructor and the dialogue to everyone. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for um, this platform to be able to uh, share the word and, and, um, and uh, fellowship together electronically. We pray that you go ahead of us and that you pour into our instructor for tonight so that she can pour into us. God, and we thank you for just being who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, Amen. Listen, we have uh, Amen. we have some tragic news. Uh, brother Sarge, our, our drummer, his brother um, was tragically um, killed in a car accident uh, a couple hours ago. Um, we're definitely praying for him and his family. They have endured a lot over the last two, three months as a family. So we want to keep them in prayer. The beautiful thing about being many parts, one body, um, was that this happened in L.A., uh, um, near South, near Watts, and uh, we were able to make some phone calls, and there are members of clergy and pastors on standby in that area waiting to uh, be with his family should they need it. So uh, we're so grateful to where if we can't get there, we can at least be connected, right, through the faith. So um, let's keep them in prayer. And then uh, we have several birthdays that we have celeb are celebrating this week. Um, Elder Barbara was on Sunday, and Sister Jackie Terry was yesterday. And Minister Suzanne is tomorrow, all right? So it's kind of a, I thought July, I thought July was crazy. September, we had quite a few birthdays in September as well. So uh, happy birthday to you ladies, and we thank God for your lives. All right. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that uh, announcement-wise, I don't think so. So we're going to get right into the lesson on tonight. Uh, Evangelist Sandy is ready to, um, uh, she's, she's ready to go. She's got that look in her eyes, and She's got internet security sitting next to her, uh, <laughs> ready, ready to make it happen. So um, <laughs> we're going to turn the floor over to her, and she's going to guide us through this lesson of tonight from Second Timothy chapter four. Um, um, I'm excited. All right, so Evangelist Sandy, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, yes. and hello, everyone. Hello. Tonight we're going to talk about belonging within loneliness. Our Bible study is coming from 2 Timothy 4, verses 9 through 22. But we also have some other good scripture that we're going to give out tonight. So you'll probably want a pen and pad so you can take note of it because we got some good stuff. We're, we all want to belong, but the idea of belonging has nothing to do with how many people are around us. Belonging is deeper than mere association. Even when he was alone in a Roman prison, Paul had experienced the reality of belonging to Christ and to his fellow believers. Now, I want to read part of our background scripture coming from 2 Timothy 4, verses 16 through 18. I'm going to read it in the CEV. It says, when I was first put on trial, no one helped me. In fact, everyone deserted me. I hope it won't be held against them. But the Lord stood beside me. He gave me the strength to tell his full message so that all Gentiles would hear it. And I was kept safe from hungry lions. The Lord will always keep me from being harmed by evil, and he will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. Praise him forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. And that was Paul. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to be lonely and yet have that sense of belonging. Is that even possible to feel all alone and yet we still and still feel like you belong? This could also be characterized as surviving the winter seasons of our life. 
we have different seasons in our life. And when we get to that point where we're feeling all alone and feeling despair, that's the winter seasons of our life. Yeah. Our attitude and our faith is what gets us through those dark and cold seasons in our life. Bishop just talked on Sunday about, yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death. We are all periodically, we all periodically walk through that shadow, but do we learn a lesson from what we've just gone through and how to conduct our lives after that? So first, let's talk a little bit about belonging. What does it mean to belong? Belonging means acceptance as a member or a part. A sense of belonging is a human need, just like the need for food and shelter. Feeling that you belong is important in order to see value in life and in order to be able to cope with intensely painful emotions when we go through those difficult times in life. Belonging can also be described as an attachment, a devotion, fellowship, friendship, closeness. Pulling people into the fold or the fellowship of our church can increase that sense of belonging for all of us. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 in the NLT says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to an, another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Amen. People talk about, oh, I don't have to go to church to find God. No, but God has given us a purpose when we fellowship like that. It gives us that sense of belonging. It brings us together. When we come together to fellow and worship, we increase that sense of belonging in church and to one another. Psalms 100 verse 3 in the CEV says, you know the Lord is God. He created us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep yep. and his pastor. Notice the words there. It said, we belong to him. Galatians 3.28 in the Amplified says, Now there is no distinction in regard to salvation, neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you who believe are all one in Christ. No one can claim a spiritual superiority. This scripture tells us if we accept Jesus and the salvation that he brings, we all belong and we are all equals. First Peter 2, 9 through 10 in the Amplified says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds, virtues, and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once we were not all, we, we were not people at all, but now we are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. And that's amplified. It, it explains it a little bit better than just the straight scripture. That's why I like to pull that out. It really, for me, it just really encourages me. According to this scripture, we were nobodies, but now we are somebodies. Nobody can tell us we're nobodies. We are somebodies. Let's look at verse 10 again. Once you were not a people at all, but now you are God's people. Before we were God's people, we were nobodies. We were previously outcasts. We were abandoned, isolated, but now we're part of the greatest group of people on the face of the earth. God's chosen. Yes. Now we belong. Yes. Amen. So what are the benefits with a sense of belonging? A sense of belonging creates a lower prevalence of mental health issues. It creates lower rates of unhealthy behaviors such as smoking, not exercising, not getting enough sleep and drinking too much alcohol. A sense of belonging creates a lower risk mortality due to cardiovascular disease. And it creates better health in general. So see, it's good for us to come to church and feel like we belong and know that we belong to God because we get all these benefits. Not belonging means something that does not belong or something that has nothing to do with something or something that simply doesn't matter. Not belonging can also be described as unrelated, unconnected, irrelevant, alien, or isolation. When we don't have, when we, 
when we don't have a feeling of belonging, we feel estrangement. And estrangement happens when something or someone makes you feel like a stranger versus the word estrangement. Like you're not accepted in a situation or the group you're currently in. Sometimes kids on the playground are good at making others feel estrangement when they shun other children and they don't allow them to play with them or they don't let them sit with them in the cafeteria. The estranged person feels that abandonment. Have you ever felt like you just didn't matter to anyone? Like everyone has abandoned you? Like no one cares anymore? That's the way Paul felt in 2 Timothy 4.16, where he says, at my first defense, no one stood by me and everyone deserted me. But then Paul goes on to acknowledge God and what God had done for him. Feelings of estrangement can grow into feelings of isolation and abandonment, which is how Paul was feeling. But he also knew how to minimize those feelings, and we should also, which we will talk about in just a little bit. Romans 8 and 9 in the CEV tells us who does not belong. It says you are no longer ruled by your desires, but by God's spirit who lives in you. People who don't have the spirit of Christ in them don't belong to him. As Christians, since we have the Holy Spirit in us, we belong. We should never feel estranged. It's the people who don't have the Holy Spirit that don't belong. So now let's look at the word loneliness. Loneliness is a state of being alone and feeling sad about it. It's okay to be alone. Some people can be alone and they're good with it. Other people, when they're alone, they get very, very sad. That's what true loneliness is. It's a feeling of sadness or even anxiety that occurs when you want to have company. However, it's also possible to feel loneliness in a crowd, especially if you aren't interacting with others or they're not interacting with you. And we've all heard that before. You can be in the middle of a crowded room and feel, still feel all alone. That's loneliness. Loneliness and the feeling of not belonging go hand in hand. And many times we create the loneliness by not getting involved. We've been hurt or rejected previously, and we convince ourselves that no one wants to hang out with us or get to know us, so we just stay isolated. So what can we do when we are lonely? When we feel like we don't belong, when we feel like God is not there. And here's the key word in all that. It's feelings. We have to be careful not to fall to our feelings. Yeah. Feelings are indicators, but they are not the truth. Feelings are designed to give you warning, to keep you out of harm's way, to steer you toward what's healthy and deter you from what's dangerous. Sometimes we let those feelings go amuck and they take us over. The world will tell us, go with your feelings, but our feelings are not stable. Mm -hmm. Our feelings sway with the circumstances that occur in each of our days. Our feelings can mislead us as they swing us back and forth and they can take us down the depths of despair if we allow it. Why do we want to follow what is unstable, inconsistent, or unreliable? Why not just seek the truth of God? There are things we need to remember and actions we can take to minimize our sense of loneliness and come into a sense of belonging. These things we can do when our feelings tell us God has abandoned us. One, we can pray boldly. Hebrews 4.16 tells us, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. Boldly means we never have to hesitate or be afraid to approach God with our concerns or our requests in prayer. Yeah. Two, we can praise God, praise him for all he is. Gratitude and praise are powerful weapons against pain and loneliness. Three, we can worship him even when it's difficult to Maintaining a life of worship keeps our hearts in tune with him, and worship comes from a grateful heart. Four, read God's word so you can learn and be reminded about his love for you and the hope that is only found in his word. Amen. If we, when we got down and depressed, if we would just pick up the word of God and start reading, oh. we would just pull ourselves out of it. Fifteen minutes later, it just Pulls us. I'll yes. get the book of Psalms and I have some highlighted and I'll start reading just the highlights. Boy, 10 minutes later, yes. I'm back on top of the world. Yes. It just, it 
kills it. It's like some people run to the medicine chest. I run to the to the bar <laughs> yeah, yeah. because that's where I get my joy. Yeah. And lastly, the con contradict feelings of truth. Regardless of what we're feeling, God's word will give us the truth. And the truth is meant to show us God's hand in our lives. The truth will help to deliver us from that negative thinking as long as we accept the truth and let go of our old way of thinking. If we are to be the people God created us to be, we have to be able to live while maintaining the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ does not depend on feelings. It depends only on the truth. So let's go back to Paul in 2 Timothy 4 verses 17 through 18 and let's see what he did. 17 and 18 in the CEV says, but the Lord stood beside me. He gave me the strength to tell his full message so all the Gentiles would hear it. And I was kept safe from hungry lions. The Lord will always keep me from being harmed by evil and he will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. Praise him forever and ever. Amen. Even though Paul is in prison, isolated and hearing other Christians being thrown into the lion's den, he begins acknowledging what the Lord has done for him and how he's protected him from evil. Even though Paul is alone, Paul chooses not to be alone by acknowledging God's presence with him and his protection. Paul also chooses to continue to praise God regardless of the circumstances that surround him. Now look, let's look at some more scripture. Let's go to Psalms 34, 18. In the CEV version, it says, the Lord is there to rescue all who are discouraged and have given up hope. We could stop right there. I mean, that yeah. is just, that's yeah. an awesome scripture right there. Deuteronomy 31, 6 in the NLT says, so be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord, your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Amen. Joshua 1 and 9 NLT. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Yes. For the Lord your God is with you yes, wherever you yes. go. Each one of these are saying he's with us. He's yeah. ahead of us. He's behind us. He's everywhere around us. Notice the word command in Joshua. A command is an order. God is not asking us to be strong and courageous. He's ordering us to not be afraid, not be discouraged, which is a lack of faith. We need to remember God is with us everywhere we go. And Isaiah 41, 10 through 13 is one of my favorite ones, but I found it in the Message Bible, and I love the way it's worded. It says, don't panic. I'm with you. There's no need to fear, for I am your God. I will give you strength. I will help you. I will hold you steady. I will keep a firm grip on you. Count on it. Everyone who had it in for you will end up out in the cold, real losers. Come on. Those who worked against you will end up empty-handed, nothing to show for their lives. Yeah. When you go out looking for your old adversaries, you won't find them, not a trace of your old enemies, not even a memory. That's right, because I, your God, have a firm grip on you, and I'm not letting go. I'm telling you, don't panic. I'm right here to help you. Hallelujah. We need to take that scripture out of the message and just pin it up on our bathroom mirror and read it every single day. Amen. <laughs> that will just rejuvenate us. Now, do these verses sound like we're stuck out there all alone? If God is omnipresent, he is everywhere, and all these scriptures speak to that presence. Yeah. We have proof that we belong based on the scriptures we went over earlier. First John 3 and 1 in the CEV says, think how much the Father loves us. He loves us so much that he lets us be called his children as we truly are. But since the people of this world did not know who Christ is, they don't know who we are. Right. This verse tells us we belong and we're loved, but not only that, with that agape love that gives but expects nothing in return, mm -hmm. it also tells us why others in the world don't understand us. Sometimes we say, why do they pick on us? Why do they don't like us as Christians? Blah, blah, blah. This scripture just says it. They don't understand. If you're not a child of God, you do not understand us. The verse in the Message Bible says, but that's also why the world does not recognize us 
or take us seriously because they have no idea who he is. That right there should give us all hope. The Bible tells us the gospel is veiled to non-believers. 2 Corinthians 4 and 3 in the ESV says, If even our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing, oh, which is the unbelievers. Second yeah. Corinthians 3.14 tells us only through Christ is the veil taken away. Once we come to Christ and we accept him as our Lord and Savior, the veil is lifted. Mm. And as we read and study the Bible, we begin to understand the verses through the Holy Spirit. It's because the veil is lifted and our hearts now become receptive and open to what the Lord has to tell us. At this point, we should all begin to realize that regardless of what we're going through, regardless what is happening around us, one thing will never change. We love the Lord, we are his children, and he will never leave or abandon us. When we are lonely or we are in our moment of despair at everything that is going on around us, Remember, we are children of God with a royal inheritance and an abundance of blessings that is due us. When it gets dark all around you and you feel alone or you just want to give up, don't. Look up instead. 2 Corinthians 4.17 in the NLT says, For our present troubles are small and they won't oh. last very long. That's right. That's right. God reminds us of the numerous times he will never leave us or forsake us. Remember what I said about when God repeats himself, we need to sit up and listen. There are several places in scripture that says God will never leave us. The word forsake means to abandon, to cast off, to reject. And God has promised that he will never do that to us. We may walk away from God, but he will never walk away from us. Hmm. Numerous scriptures will tell us this. Deuteronomy 31, 6, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1 and 5, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was uh, with Moses, yes, so I will be yes. with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Psalm 91, 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. <laughs> Psalm 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Yeah. Hebrews 13 and 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, I want to read it again in Amplified and listen to the way it's worded in Amplified. Let your character, your moral essence, your inner nature be free from the love of money. Shun greed and be financially ethical. Be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never under any circumstances desert you nor give you up nor leave you without support nor will i in any degree leave you helpless nor will i forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you my God, assuredly my God. not Amen. i love that one if you can get the Amen. amplified Amen. versions hebrews 13 5 that's Amen. another good one when you're feeling yeah. down we don't have to be like the rest of the world, lying and cheating and scheming to make money through illegal or unethical methods. That scripture just said, God will never under any circumstances desert us nor leave us without support nor leave us helpless. And God means it. Philippians 4.19 tells us all our needs are met. And they are. Maybe not our wants. We may not have that yacht, but we are going to have all our needs met. We'll have a roof over our head and food in our tummies. As Christians, when we have an attitude of contentment, it is the reminder of who God is. Gratitude for all he's done in our lives and for what he's going to do in our future. Contentment thrives in the midst of our personal relationship with God. And when we have godly contentment, we become generous with our time, our talents, and our treasures. 
Right. We want to reach out and help our brothers and sisters in Christ during their time of need, whether good or bad. But remember, everything in life is a choice, our choice. And when we're not designed to do anything alone, life is not meant to work without God in it. We oh. need to trust the scriptures, which tells us he will never leave us or forsake us. But we have to seek him. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Yes. Are we really searching for his presence with all our heart? We don't have to be alone. We can choose to belong. We can read our Bible for scriptures that will reassure us and remind us of our importance in God's kingdom, or we can ignore our Bibles and stay in the pit. Why not get the encouragement that those scriptures can bring us? We can also choose to help others feel a sense of belonging, and that's part of our gifts too. We need to bring people along and let them feel that sense of belonging too. John 15, 5 tells us, apart from him, we can do nothing. We must choose to abide, to stay, to remain with him. In closing, we have to make a conscious choice, and it is our choice. We have to decide whether we're going to wallow in the pit, live in despair, feel all alone, give up and throw in the towel, or pull ourselves up and put our faith in the Lord. Yes. Remember John 15, 5, apart from him, we can do nothing. And Mark 10 and 27, Jesus looked at them and said, with men, it is impossible, but not with God, for with God, all things are impossible. And I love how it's worded in the message Bible. It says, Jesus was blunt. No chance at all if you think you can pull it off by yourself. <laughs> Every chance in the world if you think God can do it, if you let Amen. God do it. Are we letting God do it? Remember, we, are we will never fail or truly be alone if we choose to abide in him. So who do you choose to abide in? Mm. Amen. Amen. The Amen. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. I um. <laughs> <laughs> two things first of all uh your um deacon bobby's your hype man so <laughs> if no one else is saying amen he's gonna say amen <laughs> so <laughs> grateful for that <laughs> no uh, wonderful lesson i have i, I know I, he's getting excited <laughs> yeah no, hey, I, th I thought he was gonna slap you in a minute because you, you were preaching i thought he was gonna get you <laughs> but i do i do have a question and, and uh you can answer it and, and the collective can answer it as well <clears throat> You're talking about loneliness, and I know that it wasn't asked, but I, I we deal with this all the time in the church, and um, not just Word of Life, but church in general. Uh, people that feel like they're in the church, um, they feel like they're a part of the church, but they're, they're alone. Um, was that me, or who was that? Was that me? Okay. So, I don't know. I hear noise coming from somewhere. Yeah, I hear something, but it's okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So, to that, what do you say to the people? Uh, to the person that says that I feel like I'm alone in the church. I feel like um, I feel like I don't belong, right? I, I mean, I, I love the Lord, but I just, I feel like I don't, I don't belong and I'd be better off trying to do this on my own. Yeah, but again, that's a choice. Mm -hmm. We're choosing to be alone. We have to choose to pull ourselves out of that. It's like me, if I get a little bit lonely, and this doesn't have anything to do with the church, but if I get a little bit lonely, I reach out. I start reaching out and calling people or talking to people. How are you doing? I start talking to them, hearing their problems, and I, well, I'm not alone anymore. We have yourself. to make that choice to pick up the word and get encouragement, to reach out to others. And the quickest way to not feel alone is to reach out and do something for somebody else, you know, wow. see how they're doing. Okay. Anyone else? And I only I only ask because in in my for my perspective, you know, we've had we've we've seen it uh, in and out throughout the years. You know, people would just say, you know what, I feel like no one cares about me or <clears throat> no one's reaching out to me. I feel like I'm isolated and I'm by myself. And you know, from my perspective, I say the same thing that you just said is um, you gotta consider that it could be that everyone else is going through as well, 
why don't you pick up the phone and call someone, right? Or something like that. But um, I think sometimes people think I'm crazy. <laughs> so that, don't be shy. You know, Bishop, there's one other thing that I'm thinking of. I have had people say that to me and they're, I've had a couple friends that were very difficult people. Mm. They're very negative. They're complaining all the time. And they're probably alone because yes, I've kind of pushed them off at a distance. Well, I'll pray for him, but I don't want, I don't right. want to talk to him. Right. We have to be careful how we're presenting ourselves too. And difficult people are difficult. You know, sometimes we have to reach out to those difficult ones because, you know, that's what we need to do as Christians. We just have to do that. Yeah. But, but that sometimes I've known a couple of people at the church that are like that and everybody sees them and they run for cover. <laughs> And, 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 the, and the reason, and the reason why um, Elder Tinker said to check your spirit, and that's, and uh, he's referring to the individual that, that feels that way, that says, you know, I feel like I'm alone and all that kind of stuff. I think that's, that's huge. And you said that feelings aren't the truth, they're just an indicator. And so when we get to the point where, where we're in our feelings and, and our feelings are telling us that no one loves us, no one cares about us. And I had this conversation with um, someone in another church. They were saying that they felt like, you know, during this whole pandemic, um, no one cared about them because no one checked on them. And I had to remind him or her, I said, I had the same situation happen at Word of Life. I said, but I need you to understand, just like we express to other people, everyone is going through this pandemic at the same time. None of us have ever been here before. And so when you're saying, well, they don't care about me because they haven't checked on me, then on the flip side, they could also say, well, you don't care about them because you haven't checked on them as well. If we truly are many parts, one body, and we truly are to cover one another, it's reciprocal, it goes two ways. And so for the people that feel um, as if they need all the attention, but they're not looking to give the attention, I agree with Elder Tinker, it's time to check your spirit at that point. Um, is there anyone else that wants to add to that, that desires that to that, Shana? You know, I would just say that if we need so much attention for someone who's lonely or whatever have you, yes, reach out, let someone know. Not everyone will be able to, to discern that you're lonely. So we must reach out, we, we must do that. We must first go to God and then God will direct us as to who to reach out to, but we have to make the decision to do so. So if we don't decide to do it, we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and we choose not to do it, then that's on us. However, those people who say, you know, well, I need, I need, I need, and no one's doing this for me, for me, for me. It's like, well, you have to figure out why it is that you're so needy. Why do you need so much from so many people? What is, sometimes we have to do an introspective look at ourselves to figure out why, why we feel a certain way and why we think a certain way. Obviously, those feelings and those thoughts don't really add up to the, you know, to the equal to the word of God. So we do. We have to look inside of ourselves and figure out what's happening with us. You know, where did we feel like someone dropped us, someone left us, someone hurt us? Huh. And we have to figure that out. Can, can, we, can we be uh, completely transparent and just acknowledge the fact that I don't care what church you go to, there is not a church on earth that's going to fulfill all the needs that you have, right? Absolutely. Because if that was the case, we wouldn't have a savior that died for us, okay? So, so he died. It, uh, and, and Colossians, Paul, let us know that everything is completed through him, not through the church. And so when we come to the church... Um, when we come to the church, we, we all come to the church looking for healing. We all come to the church looking for fellowship and all that and, and all that. But none of us should come to church looking for completion because completion is only in Christ. And so when we come to church looking for completion um, and then we don't find it. And I can guarantee you, if I don't care if it's the church or we can even leave the church. Back in the day when we some of us would go to the club, we go to the club looking for completion and we leave there without it. Right. And so because we're putting our we're putting our completion in the hands of people. And so the same, the same thing happens in the church. We're just people, everyone's just people. And when you come to church looking for a completion, if that completion is not in Jesus, you're gonna leave unfulfilled every time. And then you go to the next church looking for a completion, you'll leave fulfilled, unfulfilled every time to the point where you just say, I'm not going back to church because I'm not getting what I need. And so the question has to be then, what are you looking for? Because if you're really looking for, if you're really looking for Jesus, you're gonna find him wherever his name is being mm -hmm. put up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mother, Mother, Mother Hudson says, <laughs> Mother Hudson said, check your spirit. Um, you know, that was her. Sister Crystal says, the Lord put, the Lord put me around people so I can grow in him. Um, uh, making sure, 
uh, Minister Darren says, all things are possible. Uh, mm -hmm. Tinker says, we don't deserve it, but we are chosen. Sister Shelley said, thank you, Lord, with exclamation marks. And if you know her, you know that she was probably jumping and shouting when she said it. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, where's your faith has been asked. And I think that that, I think that, um, I think that that is, that is key. Other Tinker asks, the question is, where's your faith? And I think it goes back to when you come to church, if you're looking for fulfillment in anything other than Christ Jesus, then you're right. placing your faith in the hands of people. And I can guarantee you, myself included, on down to everyone else in the church, people will always let you down. People will always let you down. Sometimes it's done intentionally with malice. Other times it's done just because they have other things going on in life. But if we learn to take our faith and trust off of people and place them on Jesus, this is why the scripture says we keep our eyes on Jesus. Not on Evangelist Sandy, not on Minister Suzanne. We keep them on him because you might look at me and see something that you don't like. <laughs> and I don't want to be the reason for you to walk away from the cross. So we need to keep our eyes there. Um, Sister Wright says, this is a team effort. We got to step it up and be understanding. Our leaders are operating on new grounds. So maybe let's put emotions aside and assume that they are doing the best. I challenge that for all of us. We are all in this Thank thing, you. an uncharted territory. So this is the, if there was ever a season to say, forget feelings and let's just focus on our faith. This is it right now because the enemy is playing on our emotions. He's playing. It, it's bad enough that, that, that the government wants us to be isolated. And so in isolation, the scripture says that Satan is going to and fro as a lion seeking whom he may devour. Lions only go after prey that's isolated by themselves. And so while we're isolated, the enemy wants us to be in our feelings. So please, I, I, I love that comment. Let's get out of our emotions. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? I just wanted to say that, um, you know, we, we also need to stop looking for validation from each other because that's not where the, where we need the validation comes from the Lord. You don't need anyone here to validate you, to know who you are. You need to know who you are in the Lord yourself, because no matter how much we reach out or no matter how much we, you know, call you up or whatever, if you still don't have that validation within yourself and, and get it from the Lord, no matter how many times we call you, it's still not going to help you. Right. That's good. That's good. Yeah. 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 I would say, say this as well. If, I did not know who I was in God. If I did not know my place in God, if I did not know his love for me and his caring for me, I would be probably just lost and one of those lonely people because I can count on one hand how many people call to check on me. Me, not Bishop, me. And that can make me feel a certain kind of way. Honestly, it could. But, and, and, and when we first started, it used to make me feel a certain kind of way years and years ago, but God delivered me from that and said, honey, do you not know who you are? And Amen. Do you not know how much I love you? I'm not yeah. talking about your husband. I'm not talking about your pastor. I'm talking about you. And I had to get that and, and, and believe that for myself. And then I started thinking, yeah, yeah, God, I know how Amen. much you love me. Yes, I know who I am in you. And it's like, so if no one ever rings my phone or sends me a text or do whatever, I still walk around smiling and laughing and, and on top of the world because I'm here and I'm breathing and I know who God is and I know that he loves me for me. And I might not be everyone's cup of tea. I might, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a human woman with flaws, but that's okay for my God because he's still working on me. And as long as I'm accepted by him, as long as I know that when I'm feeling lonely, I can turn to him and know that I can go through the scriptures and go through the word or get on my knees and know that when I get up, I'm going to be all good. Everything is going to be all good for me. Amen. Even in bad situations, Amen. we have to understand Amen. God is there every step of the way with us. No matter if no one else comes, God is there. If you're alone yes, on the side yes. of the road and no yes. one wants to answer your call, God is there. Yes. So that's what we have to remember. We do yes. remember Amen. that. Yes. And it doesn't matter yes. if everyone else is not on the same page. God is there. He's yes. there. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Evangelist. Amen, Pastor. Yes. yes. Anyone else? Uh, Deacon Tommy says Christ gets the glory. Yes. Uh, 
the church is Christ and uh, Christ should get the attention. That's what he's saying. All right. Anyone else? Um, uh, let's see. Sister Crystal says, amen, pastor. So if anything, I, I pray that this lesson encourages us all. Um, hey, but <laughs> our older dog is here by my feet. He's ready to eat. Uh, he's 17 and grumpy. He's just turned into an honorary old man. <laughs> but <laughs> if, if anything, I pray that this lesson encourages us all to, uh, again, go deeper in God and understand that no matter when we feel like we're alone, he's always there. He's always present. And unfortunately for many of us, and we make excuses, we, you know, because we say, well, they're just babies in the faith. Well, babies have to grow up, right? Babies have to grow up eventually. Amen. So, it's, Amen. It's, and so at some point, you know, we have, we may have to, you know, come across as rude and telling someone, you know what, it's time for you to grow up. And yes. I can't be your savior. I need you to go directly to the cross. Amen. I have, a, I have yes. offended people that have come to the church to say, Bishop, can you just pray? Um, I could, but the altar is open. You can go pray right now, right? So it's just like we we have to start leading them to leading them to the cross because if, if we don't if they don't get led to the cross, they'll continue to come to us, and that that affects us in two ways. One, we're human; we're going to burn out. But then two, right. they never grow. God forbid if something happens to you and you're someone's source of strength, right? So we need to make Amen. sure that we point them to the cross. Um, thank you, Evangelist Sandy, for the lesson tonight. Before we close yes. out, any Amen. Other comments? anyone before we close out. Excellent message. Excellent. Amazing message. God bless you. So let me recap for you all. Uh, Brother Sarge is and his family. We're praying for them. They're in L.A. Uh, a family member was killed in a car accident um, this after earlier this afternoon, earlier this evening. Um, uh, of course, we're praying. Uh, we've talked to him and, um, you know, he's a little shaken up rightfully so right now. They've endured as a family so much over the last two or three months. Um, but his faith is solid. And um, he's, he, you know, he's being a rock for his family. However, uh, we let him know that he does not have to be alone. We have plenty of clergy friends that are in LA, um, plenty of pastors that are in LA. I've talked to three of them. They're really willing, willing to go and be with the family if need be. So let's just keep them praying and let them know that just like tonight's lesson, they are not alone. Okay, they, you know, they're not alone at all. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, we are celebrating some birthdays. We had Elder Barbara on Sunday, Sister Terry was yesterday. Minister Suzanne, if, you're, if your screen is set up like mine, uh, she's in the middle of the Brady Bunch right now. It's her birthday on tomorrow morning. And so we wish you a happy birthday. And uh, we got to figure out some way to uh, some way to celebrate, all right? And then um, outside of that, Sunday morning at 1030, we will be, uh, we'll be having worship. You can uh, tune in or you can step in. You can step in, bring a mask, it's six, feet, sit, uh, sit six feet apart. All right, and then last but not least, on next Thursday, the 17th, there is a, uh, a Zoom uh, uh, symposium that I'm uh, moderating. There's four or five different leaders from the Valley. They will be discussing all of the measures on the ballot that's coming for the upcoming election. Sometimes we only look at the president and vice president, but we don't pay attention to some of those measures that are on these ballots. And I believe that last time we kind of messed up with the gas tax. No one paid attention to it, right. right? So I think that we need to sit down and look at all these measures. It's a nonpartisan approach. They're not telling you, I've seen the rehearsal three times. They had, they're not telling anyone what to vote for. They're just explaining what these measures mean. Because I found out even for me, when I go into the booth, mm -hmm. if I haven't researched, those things are kind of confusing, right? They're worded a little bit tricky. So uh, next mm -hmm. Thursday at 6 p.m., I believe, the flyer will, will circulate on Facebook. Um, if you want information about these ballots, please tune in. You can ask questions and all that kind of stuff, and uh, they'll get you all the information you need, okay? So all hearts and minds are clear. If you want to give a seed and offering tonight, you can do so. We post it on the page, all the electronic ways to give. Um, and that's it. Elder Barron, um, yeah, Elder Barron's in Paris, or in San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge. We're going to ask her to close us out in prayer all the way from San Francisco. And, uh, and we're going to go home. I think she's muted. Let me see. Here. Yeah, you still muted. Okay. Yes, ma'am. There you go. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for this day, first of all. We thank Elder Sandy for all of the knowledge and all the information and all the scriptures that she gave that some of us, all of us will take heed to them. We'll go back and read them and that we'll be able to share them with them.
And we thank God for the word on tonight, all of those beautiful scriptures. Lord God, we thank everyone that's under the sound of my voice. For the Bree family, Lord, we ask you to be a comforter for them. For those that are ill, that are sick among us, Lord God, that you would touch, heal, and deliver even their bodies. Lord God, that you would keep us all in the hollow of your hand, Lord God, that you would keep us from any hurt, harm, or danger until we meet again. Lord God, we ask that you continue to bless our leaders, our bishop, and our pastor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 There is uh, there is women's Bible study this Friday night. Thank you, Vanessa Charlotte, for that. Uh, if you want to be a part of women's Bible study, um, uh, the Zoom info will be posted, and uh, it'll be the same setup as this, but it won't be on Facebook Live. It's just the women's Bible study, okay? Um, so it is this Friday at 7 p.m. And for, for the men, we're working on something a little bit different to reconfigure some things, and uh, we'll have an announcement over the next week or so for our men's Bible study as well. We love you all. We thank God for you, you and too. and uh, we will see you all, um, some of you tomorrow, some of you Sunday, but we'll see you. All right. God bless Amen. you. Good night, everybody. I love you all. Good night. I love you all. Bye, you all notice, you all notice how, Kay, how Kayla shows up and the background changes? What happened here? Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Amen, Mr. Sue, Elder Baron. Love you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Love all my sisters and my bishop. Bye bye. Love you. God bless you. All right. Let me get